Hi, my name is Neil Bulger, and I'm going to talk today a little bit about eQuest and about hourly reports and how to see variables in the model uh, in a spreadsheet every single hour that the model ran. This is a great way to debug what's going on in a model um, or to post-process a model. Let's say you want to go above and beyond how the fan cooling energy is calculated. Let's say you want to take some credit for natural ventilation or something to that effect. There's a way you could output uh, the fan that's running, uh, see what the temperature is outside, the dry bulb temperature, and adjust the fan power. That might be one example. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's eQuest. It's in the detailed mode uh, of eQuest. If you're familiar, everything I do will mostly be in detailed mode. And any model you create will by default already have a few hourly reports set up. Uh, here on the Project Insights tab again, you can actually see there's a little tab simulation output and then there's three subfolders, non-hourly reports. This is where um, you can see what hourly reports come out in the sim file, the .sim file, right? Usually it's defaulted to all reports. Uh, if it wasn't, you could change them here. Uh, but the hourly reports, here's the folder, so here we go, hourly reports and then it has hourly report blocks. So today we're going to show, I'm going to show you what these two are and how to create your own hourly reports. So go ahead and, and double click on one of these and it will bring up the hourly report creation window. So here eQuest has a number of objects you can output information about. And you can also create you can create a lot of blocks. You can't create infinite blocks. I think you can only create something like 20 to 30 blocks of data. And I'll, I'll show you what a block is here. So here I have actually two reports. I have hourly reports and loads output. Both of these are really just names that hold lots of blocks. And a block is something that points to a unique variable inside the model and then a unique component that is that variable type. So here, this one is not super exciting. It just says an electric meter, and it's looking at EM1, and it's listing out all of my electric uses in the building. And so each one of these is going to be a column heading in a spreadsheet. To give you another idea of another block, I'll click on this one I've already created called building load. It's looking at the building load, and it's outputting every single variable. I turned all these on the other day. If we actually wanted to output the fan power, for instance, now I've clicked on HVAC system. So now this little block called building load is actually pointing to HVAC system. I'm going to point it to my first floor. That's the name. I actually named my air handler first floor. And now I get to pick from this list of variables I want to see associated with that air handling unit. Um, you have to have something selected at all times. So if you try and uncheck this, it'll give you a little warning always fun. So let's go try and find the fan power. There's a lot of variables. Not every variable you would want, um, but there are a good amount. Uh, for instance, there is no um, exhaust fan CFM. Don't ask why, I'm not really sure. So here I found my total supply fan electricity. Um, let's say that's the only one I wanted for now. And we'll uncheck this. So now I know what the fan power is. Maybe I'll look at the total system supply airflow rate as well. Um, if you were curious, there is actually an outside air fraction. But anyways, that, that'll be enough for now. I think I also want to grab the outside air conditions, which are actually not available as an HVAC system. I would actually need to create a new block. And we'll call this weather info. And you could use our little library. You could click here, create from scratch. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to prompt me with this little drop down variable type where it wants me to pick from this really tiny list that's really hard to scroll through. Um, for what I'm doing, I actually want global. But let's, for instance, say I didn't want global. I usually don't like this one. It's too small for me. So I just hit anything until I can hit done. And now I have this much bigger window, which is a lot easier to navigate. So. Now I'll actually say, oh, I want a global output. I want to look at the dry bulb, and let's grab the wet bulb. I don't need clearness. 
So now I've made this unique block called weather info. Well, that's great. Um, if I was to run this model right now, I would actually not get this information, this block information, because for a block to actually output the data I've checked, it needs to be assigned to a report. So here, this loads output is a report, and it currently has assigned to it just one block, this building load has no other blocks assigned to it. So if I check weather info, you can actually see weather info now poop, goes underneath the loads output. So now it is associated with that report. It will generate that information when I run the model and give me some data. Uh, if you ever have a block that is not assigned to any report and you save your file and you close it and then you open it back up, eQuest might throw an error and say, hey, we found this block. It's not assigned to a report. Fix something. It won't even say fix. It'll just be an error. So if you get an error and you don't know what it is and you were playing around with hourly reports, likely it has something to do with that. So here we go. So we, you know, we got those set. I'm going to go ahead and run my model. I'm going to hit this perform simulation. Uh, it's going to ask again if I want to save. I'll hit yes. So it's going to run. And as this runs, the way I'm going to get to the hour, the hourly reports will be stored in the output files, but it will not automatically generate an Excel file, a CSV file uh, for you. Even though the data is here, it has not yet generated it. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. I'm going to open the SIM file, which will have the general detailed outputs of my energy model. So there, again, there's two ways to get eQuest to generate this CSV. Uh, this is one of them. So once it comes up, come on. Oh, here it is. Sometimes it will load without telling you it did. So I'd like to reload. Yes, I'd like to reload. So here's my sim file of reports, all sorts of fun things. And you'll notice, if you're clever, that it's up in the top right corner, there's this hourly results button. So I'm going to click that button. And by doing that, eQuest will generate the CSV file and then open it into whatever software my computer has set up to handle CSV files. In this case, it should be Excel. So of course, up comes Excel. and it will automatically open my file, tell me where it is. So here we go. We see it. It placed it in my project folder with all the other files it generates. And listed here is the time and date it simulated when it created this CSV file, the version of eQuest it used. And now I have my reports and my blocks. So here's the hourly reports. Here's the EM1 block that shows the electric meters. If I scroll to the right, there's the uh, fuel meter, and where's my other one now? Oh, this must be the SIM file. I think there was two SIM files. Let's grab that other one. Mm, it doesn't make sense. Let's close this very quick. Close this again. All right, let's try and reopen the SIM file. I had too many SIM files open, so I'm not sure they actually showed me the right one. So again, we'll open this. I'm going to click hourly results. Hmm. Nowhere to be found. Let's go back and look at this. Hourly outputs. Another way to get them would be to do export hourly results. Oh, there we go. So for some reason, the sim file method was not working for me. But here, now we can see, here's my loads output thing I named, the report I named, my 
block file of my system, and here is the total CFM of supply air, and here is the total supply fan power. So it looks like 1.14 kilowatts constantly. And then here's my global variables for my weather data, uh, the dry bulb that the model saw as it ran. Looks like continuous zeros. I'm going to give it another shot and see if that was the, the right report. It might be that this is pointing to something else. Global building loads. Seems so strange. How could it have absolutely no weather conditions? Anyways, ideally this would work. So I think this kind of gives you an idea. Uh, I will post something up here more if, if I find out anything else. But that's how you can generate annual reports. And there's lots and lots of different variables for a number of different elements, all the way down to the windows and walls and things like that. So thanks.